Welcome to part 3 of the training diary example. If you haven't checked out parts 1 and 2 then uh, get onto them first and we'll just continue with the flow of this one. Uh, if you can recall we have put together the data entry page which needs a bit of tidying up but is effectively uh, working. We have gone onto the control panel page and put in a bunch of formulas that's going to make it easy for us to collect summary information. Now one thing I just want to point out that I've done since part two is that I added two more rows at the bottom of our summary table that was these two rows here sport load and S&C load and really all I did was try and draw out the training load which is obviously just for football there and the S&C load which is the sum of aerobic strength power speed so uh, in my presentation of training diary information I often like to make that distinction. Now the second thing that I've done which I'll walk through first is that when we are pulling together a number of different athletes training diaries we want to make it simple so columns P and Q here represents the entire summary of this week's training diary so if I wanted to paste this into another page I could just select this entire column everything that's shaded grey copy paste it and it would uh, uh, make things nice and quick for me so what I've done is that these eight values here are directly from the diary page so if I click on the formula you'll be able to see that it is pulling from the diary page and it is the average of B6 to 86 so um, it's effectively doing this but what I'm doing is I'm putting it on, a sum, on the uh, back page rather than the front page just to keep that front page clean and make it easy so the same thing for those other ones below it down here we've got all the training load calculations that we did in part 2 and it's just a direct cell reference to the cell here so all it is is just directly referencing to this little section here but importantly putting it all in one column so I'm going to move on now to the master page so let's assume that we've put this out to an athlete and they've filled in some data for example ideally they have completed it uh, top to bottom I'm just going to put in a little bit more stuff to make it work for us so they've emailed us their file I am going to copy this and paste it this would normally be on another sheet obviously that you would house but to keep the, the tutorial flowing I've just put it in the same workbook for now and I would simply paste it here paste special values I would open up my other, in this case, three other athletes' diaries, and I would paste them in the, com, uh, the columns appropriately. So I'm just going to do it here, and I'm just going to edit things just very, very slightly. I would put together a team average. it would be sensible for this whole column to put if error in front of that average calculation as we know uh, how perilous it can be when you're doing average calculations alright so let's assume that we've got a whole lot of data in here we want to actually be able to do something with it for a start you can get some basic information just by looking at the data obviously but the real power of going through this entire process is to make it easy so 
I've created a report page and I haven't really done much here. I'm going to create a little bit of a dashboard from top to bottom. So some data validation first. Hit F3 and we can choose dates. So there we go, we can pick the date that we want to pull the data from. I didn't show you, but in that Team Master, you know, you've got space for week two, space for week three, etc. Now this one here, what I wanted to be able to do is, is create the ability for the user, the trainer, sports science guy, to um, pick the team average and plot that, or to pick the team average and one of the players and plot those, or pick two of the players and compare them to each other and so on. So first thing I want to do to put this function in place is create some data validation. I could use one that I've already done before. We created a list with athlete names, but what I really want to be able to do is include team average in that list so it's probably easiest just to create a new named range so I'm going to call this report selection options and if I now go back to my report page I can put that in place Cool. So, I can pick team average and I can pick this guy's data to plot. Now, as I've mentioned before, it's always good to keep the workings away from the pages that the users interact with. So, um, back on the team master page, what I've done here is I've put selected option 1 and selected option 2. Um, I'm just going to move them up a couple of cells. What I want to be able to do is reference that to there and that to option 2 just to make it easy to understand when you're doing corrections on this later. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. We're going to use a really cool formula that nests a couple of things in amongst each other. And what I want to be able to do is based upon the selection that the user has made, it will look in the correct week, find the correct person, and dump the data here. And then what we can do is we can use this block that I've just highlighted to plot all our graphs and draw all our uh, dashboard information from. So this is where um, we need to just get a little bit involved what I would do in advance, and I've done this for a couple, is I've created a named range called week one. And this named range captures everything, including the column headings, down to the bottom of that block. I did it again here for week two, as you can see. And we want to use a function called indirect. What indirect does is it takes a selection or some text from a cell and converts that to a named range. Use the selection that the person's made and pick from the right table. So if they pick week one, Monday the 5th of March, it goes to that table and pulls out the data. If they select Monday the 12th of March, it goes to that table. So we need to use a bit of a, a combination of things to get this sorted first thing that's probably easy to do again to make it uh, nice and clean is to bring across the selected week that helps us uh, do our formula without having to click backwards and forwards between sheets so what I want to do firstly is indirect so indirect is a really cool function uh, I've used it in one of my other videos, but uh, if you haven't come across it before, there's plenty of awesome tutorials on YouTube that will take you through how to take advantage of this. What I need to do is find some text. 
what I have done is because for me week one is Monday the 5th of March but it might not be for you so I don't want to use that as the name of my range I've called it week one so I need to find that out so firstly I'm going to type the word week in quotes there when you're using text you need to use quotes and now I'm going to use a function match now Monday the 5th of March is the first item in my list there's a name range called dates that we've used in a couple of drop down boxes and Monday the 5th of March is the first item on that list so match pulls out the number that corresponds to the place in the list that your selection is from so I'm going to look up that value I think I'll lock that down. I'm going to look it up in an array that I've forgotten the name of. I click F3 and it tells me dates and I want an exact match. And I just want to check that I've done that right. So if I go up into my formula bar, select that part of the fu function, hit F9, I get it to evaluate for me and it tells week 1. So this should work. If I select the whole lot, week one. So that's exactly what I want. It's now going to pull from the right table. Close brackets on that. And what I've got now is the ability to start doing um, index functions. So I'm going to go index. The, the indirect formula that I've just created will give me the array that I want, the row number, can be pulled out using the rows function so if I lock that two but keep the three open it gives me the row number that I want the column number I need to match the selected option one which in this case is team average where do I need to match it in this entire array here I need to include column A in this selection so that it gives me the right number and close bracket and enter. So what that's done is it's found exactly the right value for me. Got something wrong here. A dollar sign there should solve it. Great. Alright, so if I drag that across, it looks like everything has worked out just fine. Cool, so I'll just test that out. And see if it works by selecting Joe Johnson. And yes, it's worked just fine. So we've got the starting point now of being able to do uh, a bit of dashboard work. So we've created our functions and formulas we could now for example um, do a little bit of, of graphing that'll be part four we'll create a dashboard from these selected options thanks for coming past I will catch up with you soon